Hey everybody, this episode of the Silver Tongue Podcast is sponsored by Tattoo Flash Collective. Tattoo Flash Collective is a great place to find your favorite artists, prints, and flash. There are national and international artists to choose from. Pick single sheets or mix and match artists. Listeners of the Silver Tongue Podcast can receive a 10% discount when they use the promo code SILVERTONGUE at checkout. Head over to TattooFlashCollective.com and browse the collection. It's a great way to give back to the tattoo community and have something amazing to show for it. I, I, I don't know if I could do it. Yeah. I, I'm getting more into it. I, I listen to like some art podcasts mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I yeah. love that that Scott Harrison podcast. It's like The Mirror Cave. That was my favorite one. Yeah. We've been doing mostly tattooers right now, and I've just been asking a lot of people's opinion on like what they want to listen to and what they want to hear. Cool. Because I don't want it to be just a guy spouting off opinions and be right. like, back oh, in the day, blah, blah, blah. Sure. Oh, God. Because yeah. it's fucking annoying. Yeah. But I also noticed that people in tattooing have changed quite a bit, and they've become not this like ego toting people. Yeah. Like they're pretty thoughtful, interesting people. Yeah. Or there are those involved anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like one of those things where you're like, fuck, I don't know if I should do yeah. it or not. Right. And the only way you can find out is just to yep. fail. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that, that. my studio, my mm-hmm. home studio or whatever. That's, that was that. Like, I, I think I was like a total kind of queenie about it, honestly, because I really had this vision for what I wanted it to be. And it just didn't ultimately work out to mm-hmm. be that and not to be a baby about it or anything like that i was just like it totally changed it just like totally disappointed that was that was something i was thinking but i had to do it i had to try it to yeah kind of it. that was something i was considering as well to yeah. do before moving to a different shop do something on my own or move somewhere yeah i needed to make a move of mm-hmm. some sort and so that was <laughs> a little nudge you mm-hmm. know but moving down there i felt like i wasn't going to be stepping on anybody's toes or you know down to patucket yeah yeah at least Roms, anyway. You know, uh-huh. so. Yeah, what, I mean, you've been there quite a while. At Roms? Yeah. Um, I started tattooing there in 2005, mm-hmm. m- maybe just a little bit before that. But then, um, yeah, and then I moved away for a little bit mm-hmm. and kind of visited Hawaii and the West Coast a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then we then we came back, had a baby and stuff. Yeah. Are you from this area originally? No, I grew up in Florida. In Florida, okay. Yeah. And what brought you up here? Uh, an ex. Funny is I, I, I came up and I... When I was coming up, I uh, was corresponding with the guys over at uh, Redemption mm-hmm. about because I think Grez had just left or was going to leave, right? Yeah, yeah. to go to New York, and and I kind of got in the mix with all that change because his I think his wife was working for Rom, mm-hmm. and she left, so there's wound up being space. But I, I went working somewhere else for a little while out of town, right? And kind of left them hanging a bit, and then I so when I came back, they had already filled the spot. Mm-hmm. McAleer, I think, got went in oh, there. Okay, so. <laughs> but then he was leaving. Rom, so I got the spot there. Well, mm-hmm. I think maybe Virginia moved to New York, and then I got the spot there. So right. it worked out. I knew who he was from way back, you know, in the 90s. Yeah, I remember Rom from back then, too. Yeah. I think I f- found out about him through skateboarding yeah. at first, because my cousin was a big skateboarder, and we'd go to Maximus, yeah. the skate right. park. I believe he owned it, or yeah, at least ran it. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Before I was started tattooing, he was all, already tattooing. Oh, yeah. A lot of my friends from... This area all had tattoos. Everybody's got something from Ron, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah, he's great. That's, that was one thing I, when I, you know, didn't get the spot there, I was like, I know that guy. And I know, and I liked his work mm-hmm. from back then and everything, like all that the stuff I remembered. It right. was all cool colors and fat lines and all that. Yeah, it definitely was. <laughs> so it was cool, stuff. yeah. Mm-hmm. Creative stuff. Yeah, definitely creative. Yeah. He's a super creative guy and still a killer skateboarder and everything, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, he's kind of like a Boston icon in a way. Oh, yeah, he's, totally. <laughs> yeah, I think feel like everybody knows Rom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was a, one of the first. I think he the first in Boston open. Yeah, it was like him and um, the dude that does the convention. Nate. Nate, Nate Tom. Tom. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But those guys, were, I think, were all underground forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I already told a story about this, but I actually got arrested for tattooing in Martha's Vineyard. Really? Yeah. Because I had like an underground thing yeah. as well. Yeah. I was tattooing and waiting for it to become legalized right. and it just never happened. Right. And so I went and moved to Philadelphia for a few years before okay. it opened up again or opened up for real. Right. But. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. It was a funny little episode in, in my yeah. uh, my life. That's exciting though. I love it. I love the, that's some of my favorite times really honestly is like I've been just underground tattooing. Mm-hmm. 
I was actually tattooing with another guy as yeah. well. And we had a beeper code yeah. and like a, a basement shop. Yeah. And it was just straight up tattooing. Awesome. And that's actually how I used, I got in touch with uh, Forrest because yeah. he, he had an underground thing as well waiting mm. to open up. At the time, I didn't do any Japanese tattooing or anything right. like that. So I would send him work. Okay. And in doing so, we had like a little correspondence. Yeah. I agree. I kind of miss it. And yeah. I don't know why like maybe that idea of having like a private studio scared me so much but i think when i was getting tattooed by eddie deutsch at roms mm -hmm. he has his private thing mm -hmm. i was getting my back done by chris and right. he has a private thing yeah and like just all of a sudden just meeting all these different people with private studios and yeah. i was like oh it's in my head now like, yeah oh maybe maybe i should do it as well yeah. You know, I, I definitely was wanting to have something that was closer to home because I, I spend as much time as I can with my, my son. So I figured that would be easy. I could just like, while he's at preschool or something, I just like <laughs> go put one on and then go pick him up, and, uh -huh. you know, which is still, it's still so attractive. Mm -hmm. And I have enough people that want to get some weird stuff and, you know, yeah. but I really enjoy, uh, when I first moved back to mass, I was, um, I was doing that before mm -hmm. I went back and worked at ROMS and, uh. And it was so great. I loved it. And mm -hmm. then, uh, but then it, ultimately I got, I got a little bit lonely. Yeah. Cause I really, those, everybody I work with, it's like, they're my friends, they're my family. There's a lot of people I know from Florida, you know, a million years ago. Mm -hmm. Lucky and Melissa. And, right. Okay. So you, know, you guys work together. I worked with, um, I never ever worked with Lucky. Okay. Or Melissa until here, but I know them from there. Uh huh. Cause they worked at a shop that I worked at previously in, in uh, Tampa in the mm -hmm. 90, early 90s. I worked at. Right. And th that's and then, Melissa Baker. Yeah. 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 And uh, Lucky Matthews. Yeah, right. Which are awesome. I still bounce back and forth because I, I want to just work by myself. I just have a day. I don't have to mm -hmm. think and deal with other people. And client, the way you're you know, working with your clients is so different and it's much more comfortable. But when I do guests or trips and go visit the shops, man, it's just mm -hmm. so fun. Yeah. I, and I happen to have a bunch of friends that are fun so when you're at the place it's just like it's so cool to be in there <laughs> yeah so I, maybe i just get it out that way yeah totally the thing i like working with other people is that i get to bounce ideas off oh, of people of course, yeah. and especially with drawings yeah. even if somebody doesn't do the same style sure, they sure. can obviously see something that yep. doesn't work i like that and, yeah. and I, diversity of the crowd mm -hmm. there yeah yeah i definitely take advantage of that yeah. wherever i work it doesn't matter who it is sure. or what level it's such a i don't know if you ever have these thoughts but i mean what a cool thing to work in a room of essentially you know commercial artists mm -hmm. yeah that do so <laughs> many different types of things and that you can do that you know like mm -hmm. especially nowadays where everybody's kind of organized where they have the black and gray person and a trad person right new school this that whatever but you have all those different views of the same thing that you're doing mm -hmm. you know yes. as opposed to that any kind of stale view mm -hmm. you know just a shop full of new school people or a shop full of trad people or a shop full of this or that right well it's sort of funny to have labels and things but <laughs> it's a thing the diversity if you can really manage it and it's it's a huge advantage i think so yeah we have a bunch of different guys yeah. at royal yeah, yeah. and one of my buddies there he does a lot of the dot work mm -hmm. and i get a lot out of the way he approaches something and yeah, uh, how he like would fill in something yeah. and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, it, that stuff. So it's so cool to see just how someone would approach. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a um, uh, is it is it Chelsea that works for Ron in uh, Providence? Okay, she, yeah, I, I don't know her last name. Yeah, I, I can't either. She's yeah. super nice. But, Sorry, Chelsea. Um, I've never actually um seen one person do it. Uh huh. And it was just amazing to actually watch it. That's. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Like, I don't think that way. I don't see that. Right. It's kind of like, of a, that. I guess, if you categorize it like a neo traditional and yeah, I, I would like portrait shading yeah. in a way. Color heavy. It's super saturated, you know. I don't really know what to call it. Yeah. It's, but it was a great tattoo. Yeah. But just a, so different from my brain. It was cool to, mm -hmm. like, I really felt like I had a moment where I was like, wow, you know, <laughs> watch that happen. But it's cool that you can have that, even though you, you may not want to tattoo that way. Right. But there's definitely things that you can take from it sure. and add to your own little thing. And that's the biggest thing I've been learning now is always staying open to whatever it is and, and not trying to 
think like I, I have it or anything yeah. like that. Cause oh, yeah. there's so many like gross feelings that come along with that. Oh, as it's, well. a, it's like a, it, I always felt like if you start thinking that way, you're done. Mm -hmm. you go do something else where you don't. But if you just start, oh, there's nothing left to learn or any of that. Mm -hmm. Go jump off a cliff or something. Right. <laughs> so with your work, are you trying to focus more on painting now or? Well, I, I have, I have been, um, I have more free time. So I have been painting a bit, a bit more. Mm -hmm. And I went through a big tear in the early 2000s and then um, then kind of slowed down a little bit and then slowed down a little bit more once I had the, my kid, but yeah, but it kind of, you know, it's all hills and valleys and sure, stuff. But um, lately I have just trying to get that kind of revved back up mm -hmm. and I have been doing stuff, you know, pretty consistently, but I have some bigger, bigger visions for some things, do some really, really big, big, big painting. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. In uh, like watercolor. Or... I've been working. Yeah. Like with the, like with gouache. Mm -hmm. The last um, couple big, big paintings that I posted on Instagram kind of recently, it was like a rock of ages and a, mm -hmm. uh, then some big space helmet thing. Yeah. I... That was all like watercolor, like tube watercolor, mm -hmm. which is like going, going back. When I first started painting, it was like just the nib and ink and mm -hmm. some Windsor Newton. Yeah. I'm really liking the nudes that you're mm, doing yeah. with the the women with the designs yeah, super nice and then you've also been making the frames to go along with it yeah, yeah i was trying to pick your brain over yeah <laughs> instagram yeah the, that was super fun that was one big project i did get done with my space because mm -hmm. that was kind of a a, a bit more uh, challenging because i didn't really know what i was doing so i had to kind of learn the process and yeah and all that but those were fun i've got a bunch of those big girls going how big are they um, most of the time I, I usually paint those relatively small five by seven, mm -hmm. you know, or somewhere in that range just to make them accessible to, cause I, a lot of times when I paint something really big, when it's over, I don't really want to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. I still have to like see what, what I did. Right. <laughs> so a lot of times like that, this, that big space helmet I just painted, that thing is boxed and gone. Yeah. I did it. I pulled it off the block and put it in there. So I didn't, I would have kept that for quite a while. Uh -huh. See, <laughs> Just I have to stare the opposite at it thing. And <laughs> tear it apart. <laughs> yeah. That I feel like the moment that I had painting that was like a, like a big meditation. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like I don't, I still need it. It's not like done to go away. That was like the coolest painting I've done up to this point. Right. And then I, you know, eventually I'll, I'll, either hide it or sell it or something like that. But, but most of the times I like to hang on to them. The bigger ones, the small, the small ones, I kind of paint them to go. And the girls are really fun and a lot of people really dig them. Yeah. With those, I, I do have a couple of really big ones that are a little bit more raunchy that are going, they're kind of getting a little bit more that way mm -hmm. for now. I don't know. We'll see. But <laughs> sometimes I've been trying to experiment a lot with body stuff, you mm -hmm. know, like and it just not be all just conventional idea of what hot is or you know right. and that those those ladies like they're a lot of really curvy and a lot of kind of stuff so mm -hmm. just i don't know my wife started working with women who've had breast cancer and stuff and mastectomy right you know reconstructive all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff so some of the spirit came from those and i have um a big one i'm working on for her that's like a mm -hmm. cancer survivor kind of thing so right. just i like the aesthetic of what i'm making and a lot of times they also have a little bit more psychological stuff kind of wrapped up in them, even though they're just like, a lot of them are just like mm -hmm. a cool view <laughs> yeah. of something beautiful, you know, or whatever. So. Yeah. I find packing some sort of meeting into artwork. It, it's not really wanted so much. I think yeah. in, I guess, art production as, right. as much, um, even in paintings, like I don't see when I was kind of selling paintings professionally or in galleries, it seemed like things that I might've put, more heart into or like maybe came up with a backstory nobody was very much interested in yeah, but yeah. the very mundane type of arrangements they just want the aesthetic yeah of it, yeah but i remember in tattooing years ago during the consult and telling people what certain symbolism means to me and yeah. people really kind of dug that yeah this has been a little bit more magic yeah yeah i've been thinking about that more lately because there's definitely a lot of kind of imagery that I produce and it just has no significance to me. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, I'm just 
doing it because this is what yeah. I'm asked. But I've been really kind of missing that because yeah. it, it's not just making something with your hand it could have something else to yeah. it. Maybe nobody's going to see it, but I, I'll be sure. able to see it. Yeah, that's I feel like those are those med- meditation, you know. Mm-hmm. I had someone ask if I meditated and I said I said no initially because mm-hmm. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't really always mindfully just sit down and breathe and think or, or, or try to empty my head or whatever. Yeah. But then I actually do when I'm painting. I just never thought of it. And then I, I do a lot of paintings that are like, they come from that state. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it wasn't always a conscious thing that I, what I was making. I just like would sit down and just make this thing. Oh, yeah. that's cool. That was fun. Uh huh. And then I'd make another one, make another one, and then it'd be over. So it was almost like you're getting like this little chatter. Yeah. Of what to make. Yeah, I always, magical. I always think of it as some sort of like like an antenna and you just kind of open up Absolutely. to that. And yeah. There's a lot of Absolutely. different theories, I think, of where people get their creativity from or it's all out there anyways. Yeah. And you just have to attune yeah. yourself. Yeah. You let that. open a little doors or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. The uh, And I feel like I have those. I have like a few different s- states and and the girls are one. And then I have this other kind of like more work type aesthetic where I'm mixing elements of all the stuff I've done all these years Mm -hmm. and make something a little bit more original or something out of it. Mm -hmm. That space Viking kind of jazz, you know, which Mm -hmm. I totally want to do a lot more of that. But then I have the other stuff with a lot of it's the white painting on black board Mm -hmm. and everything. Those are, Mm -hmm. they just kind of like come out. Something about that black and the, and the white and the layering like you just you build it and create this thing out of out of nothing, and it's the same the other way. Mm-hmm. But I think um, maybe because we're always drawing on, we're using black lines. On, you know, everything's in that positive kind of view. The just switching to this thing that you can't tattoo it. Mm-hmm. It's more freeing, and I, and it just kind of happened. You have this experience being able to look at what you have and and read it after the fact. Like what is that? Why did it make that? Where did that come from? Right. Or why am I, why are all these, what are these things, mm-hmm. you know, then it can get real weird and you're like, you know, they beings or right. more of a, just a stream of consciousness. It's like no plan. Mm-hmm. Let's see what happens kind of thing. Yeah. As an admirer of your work mm-hmm. and definitely follow and, and love what you do. The thread I see or the common thread is that there's no real common thread, which I really mm-hmm. Like there's segments of different things, but I feel when I look at your work, you have like a vision could be with the biomac, and it you create a whole world, and everything fits together in mm. that world. Same thing with the Japanese. Yeah. It comes from you, yeah. and you can definitely see it's from you. That's nice to know. <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, that's what I get out of it. Yeah, you have that mark. I think for me, I that just all comes from not knowing mm-hmm. what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> I uh I'm not trained in any way. Mm-hmm. I I basically learned uh, art through tattooing. Uh oh, this looks like it's going to be fun and, and then I'll uh-huh. try to make it happen or something. Yeah. A lot of the time like I said a lot of times I'm just just sitting down and trying to have a good time. Mhm. Just get real stoned and yeah. <laughs> and see where it takes me, uh-huh. you know. But it does have, yeah, like you're, like it does have these different moments of how I'm, whatever I'm feeling, the aesthetic mm-hmm. or whatever. But it, those black paintings are definitely the, I'm way, uh-huh. way out. I wish I could plan more. <laughs> I, I <laughs> it's just, know. it's so awesome to hear it, you know, hear what you have to say about it. But, <laughs> like, I always feel like I, I wish I made more of a plan. Uh-huh. Even with drawing on tattoos and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like, I draw more, 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 and more all the time. And um, just so when I do sit down to draw something on, mm-hmm. I got it. Yeah, you know, I got a pretty good idea what it's going to look like before I have it. You mm-hmm. know, have it on there. I think with planning, at least over planning, can be a deficit. Yeah, because almost the same way is is like you know there's an eraser on the end of the pencil. Yeah. It's like if you don't have an eraser, you're going to be a lot more cautious about what your sure. your lines are and that's a lot of times why i draw with a ballpoint pen because mm-hmm. i know i can't erase it so i have to make do oh, yeah. with what i Bad have idea. but there's always this feeling like i have a way out and so you just push it back to more planning sure i think it can be a crutch in a way yeah, like a resistance or whatever yeah. yeah and you end up procrastinating or postponing mm. what could be 
Yeah. I think the most valuable thing is when you have that inspiration is to capitalize on it. Right. And if you blow your wad on a sketch, right. that's it. Right, right. You, you did know, it. That's the thing. Yeah. After that, it becomes too laborious. It, it yeah. just feels like work. Yeah. That's my experience with a lot of over planning. Yeah. But some paintings or artwork that I've done in the past, I couldn't have done it without a certain amount of oh, planning. Oh, sure, yeah. But I think the marriage of the two of being like, oh, I have a set plan, at least want to get the proportions right. Right. I have a rough idea what the color is going to look like, and then I'm going to leave a lot loose yeah. so that I can add to it or right. take away from it. I've never, uh, I've never oil painted, I think, or got into any of that style of painting, even with any of the other mediums, because of the planning part. Uh -huh. And I think like the the freeness of the the the, the gouache on that board, mm -hmm. just the white. I'm only got one color. Mm -hmm. You can get great tones with the absorption. Of, yeah, with the washes and everything. So it's like it's just that monochromatic kind of vibe. It just is easy for me to get, and I can just kind of get mm -hmm. kind of loose and see what happens with it. Which I've kind of thought I've, I've thought it would be cool to try to do that kind of stuff with oil, but I've never. I would like to do some more real, real painting. Uh -huh. Not that you know the other stuff's not real, but so with some oils though. Yeah, I have a really uh, a buddy. I'm not sure if you know him. He's a painter here. You know Tony Bevilacqua? Oh yeah, yeah. I've actually painted with him. Oh, awesome! Yeah, uh, he's so awesome. Uh, and he turned me on to painting with the walnut oil because mm -hmm. it was not stinky and all that. So I, I messed around with some of that, but not really sat down to really make something. Yeah. I just, I love the idea of it, that building it up the same as like with watercolor and stuff. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. But being down in Rhode Island, there's, um, RISD has a bunch of classes. Oh yeah. Have you? And I just looked into a gouache, a gouache painting class. So just kind of have some sort of like, let's see what these people, uh -huh. <laughs> have some structure or something. I don't know. You know, what I think would probably be really beneficial is to do like a, an illustration class. Yeah. More so than an oil painting. Yeah. Because. That's a great idea. I think with the illustration, you're forced to, or you learn tricks in order to come up with things in your head. And I think for tattooing and definitely doing more creative work where yeah. you don't have a still life or yeah. uh, an actual model in front of you. Yeah. Learning those types of tools of, yeah. um, can be very oh, useful. That, that makes more sense because I definitely feel like more of an illustrator than I do a painter anyway. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. they, with the thing with the illustrators, they use a lot of those techniques. Yeah, yeah. But more in a creative fashion. I just feel like Frazetta was more of like an illustrator. Yeah, exactly. And that's my, <laughs> you can paint like him, you know, like that'd, that'd be, be awesome. Killer. Just that quick, loose, the uh -huh. sketches. Uh -huh. Instead of Conan, you have some sort of Viking alien. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Any of those guys, like uh, Bisley or that look, that that built up. Mm -hmm. I love that look. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever done anything with the just acrylic paint that way? Yeah. 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 yeah all of it. I mean, I have done mm -hmm. my painting with all of it. Yeah. <laughs> but just nothing's nothing's ever really grabbed me, like the um, like just the tattoo, like generic kind of tattoo setup. Mm -hmm. Even the like most of the time, I'm still using a, a nib. You know, black. I shape. Do the black shading. Do this color. Do that color. You know, yeah. it's like. It's all the same process for the most part. The girls are that way for mm -hmm. sure. It's all just rearranged flash painting ultimately, you know, like. Right. But I like the variance of tone that you're using because obviously the line weight on the girls are different and mm -hmm. the, the tone and color is slightly different. And so there's definitely a good usage of separation and value yeah. and, and all those things like that. I mean, that's what I pick up from it. Sure. And everything's very clear and abstract at the same time. Mm -hmm. And. Those were the inspiration for that to try to ma make some other kind of painting process was mm -hmm. um, was those girls. Because I was like, these are starting to feel like sketches, like pre-paintings mm -hmm. for a pa for a, yeah. a more another painting. And I was um, thinking to, to make some bigger, larger mm -hmm. ones in a different medium and really try to freak that like uh -huh. under the skin look, you know. But I but, think that's a the natural progression really okay cool <laughs> yeah because if i mean one thing leads to the other and yeah i mean i've done that where i've had small paintings so i was like oh that's i think i can use that for something yeah. else and and it becomes like a series or yeah. whatever it is i just like you know looking i've always looked at, at these bigger these painters 
kind of learning a lot more stuff like through juxtapose in the 90s really yeah. so it's like mark Ryden and or these painters like that where they have this real classical look mm-hmm. and vibe to it but um but they're doing these other abstract subject matters or right. whatever but then seeing their process stuff was always more mind-blowing than the than looking at the these awesome painting after right. awesome painting in the magazine but it'd be like oh you, this is a, a five or six foot by four foot or whatever painting this mm-hmm. massive thing and then there's this you know 11 by 14 painting that's exactly the same yeah the same amount of detail the same amount of like it's not sketchy or anything mm-hmm. but he's like already probably drawn it a bunch painted it a bunch and then boom he does this big thing yeah. so that was like i don't ever hang out on anything that long too long yeah like, like i said i everything i've learned artistically was through the process of making a tattoo mm-hmm. so it all started from i don't i started when i was really really young i had a high school education and that wasn't that awesome you know, for any kind of art or anything. There was, I just had that like I want to make drawings, I mm-hmm. want to make things. But but then once you got in the sh- once I got in the shop and I started working, it was like I have to learn how to draw a butterfly or a panther or a this or mm-hmm. that. And we had tons of really great, really like way ahead of my learning range uh, stuff from Mauricio in Brazil. And then all that old Eddie and Guy stuff. Okay. There's all this other ideas. But those were like more influenced. Like, oh, I want to make mm-hmm. some stuff that, like that. But I had no idea how to do it. So it all just came from taking taking a flash thing, tracing it, moving it around, make this whole new thing, you know, or whatever. Everything came from that. Right. And I still do it. I'm still – every the process is still very much tattoo, even though it's like I'm doing this whole other right. thing, you know. But I don't. I don't think it's going to be any benefit to change that. No, no. But just ad- adapt it. Yeah, I feel. I feel like the. Um, we, just going back to what we were talking about with the planning, and mm-hmm. I was saying I wasn't a. I wish I was more organized mm-hmm. about that and stuff like that. I think that I've come to where I'm just like I don't. Okay, I don't. I'm not. This is. <laughs> I'm just going to do what I do, and I'm totally. I love it. I love it. What I'm making and everything, but uh, just have that little voice in your head where you're like, oh, you should do yeah. that different or make it better or change this or try this or mm-hmm. or just kind of giving up on it and just like, no, this is just do you, you do. This is what I do. I love it. Mm-hmm. That approach is a very 19th century. I, even before, I think originally they were doing a lot of the planning to show the benefactors mm-hmm. where you would have the, the drawing, the color study, and then you would show the person buying it what the finished product might actually be okay and then they agree on it give you more money (laughs) okay and then you go to the next stage okay but i think more so in the 19th century and and also like uh with a lot of landscape painters they didn't have a camera to like go out and take photos of things and bring it back but you you have sometimes these old photographs of the finished painting and you have all the different studies each figure that's in the painting would have its own painting or at least drawing right different types of arrangements different color harmonies right. you know if it's a, a night scene a day scene they would present these things during the unveiling of a painting wow at the very same because there was a sense of pride how look at work. how much work yeah. had gone into this yeah, absolutely and i think when you're doing those types of paintings where it's very refined figure painting sure. you you could make a living just on selling the studies and Sure. Like, I've done that as well. Like, yeah. I've sold a lot of studies, more studies than I've sold actual paintings yeah. because they're more affordable. Sure, sure. They're rushed. But it's very cool what the landscape painters would do. They would go and they'd see one rock, paint that rock, a bit of shrubs behind it. They would go and paint a bunch of sunsets. Each sunset it has different stages and different colors. And if you're fast, you can you know paint three or four of them sure. in one sunset. And you're just marking the colors. And then you take that back to your studio. So you have the experience of that. You have the memory of it. Mm. You have the color study and the experience of doing that. And all of these things jolt your mind and it kind of inspires you. And what you're really able to rely on is almost like a dream mm. of the the scene. And that's more suited for artwork in general. So yeah, it's amazing. I think a lot better 
than maybe taking a couple snapshots. Yeah. But I, I mean, I would do that as well. I've yeah. been on a couple painting retreats like that. Right. Yeah. I, I, I was just thinking like it would be like where you have your mind is more quiet mm. maybe then too, where you didn't have as much yeah. outside stimulus and you could hang on to those visions for so much longer. Definitely. It's tough even now with the, to keep track of stuff and how mm. much information that we're absorbing all the time. Yeah. But I think as artists now, we're required much more mm. because back then it, they would paint one painting for a year. Right, right. Oh, man. And yeah. we're ex asked to do yeah. so much. Yeah. It's no wonder they're able to reach such high quality and right. refinement. It's amazing. The fashions today, I don't think would allow it. Right. Anyway. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> So what's uh, any future plans you have? <laughs> <laughs> um, besides the painting, I did, like I said, I did want to get into some, I am getting into some larger work mm -hmm. on my off time. But I uh, For painting or for tattooing? Painting, for yeah. painting, yeah. I'm always open for work. I've got plenty of tattoo time and mm -hmm. like a lot of people might think I'm really super busy. I'm not that, you know. I, I, I'm busy and I'm happy. I've got plenty of awesome stuff and... I'm always open for more. I took a big hit. I changed my schedule to to be more of a dad, mm -hmm. which I totally love. Um, it's like all of a sudden I just realized it's like I barely, barely work. Mm. And since he was born, I've worked six, seven days a week right. to go from that to working like three or two or four. It's like, whoa, it's so crazy. Mm -hmm. I was kind of felt, I actually felt like I was kind of coming apart a little bit. But now I'm kind of, He's in school. Things are, you know, like getting a little bit more back to normal and, and I'm getting a lot more time for for painting and, and prepping. I'm getting a lot more ideas for fun tattoos and stuff. Mm -hmm. So this in uh, 2019, so this next year, I'm planning on doing a lot more, a lot more traveling, trying to get out and do some driving around the country a little bit, mm -hmm. trying to do like a, a week a month or so, see, see some more people and get out a little bit more because since I, I just have the availability and everything right I, I wanted to do an east coast like down the east coast i usually do like once or every other year we do the family thing we'll just drive down just to get it out of the cold weather and everything mm -hmm. like that then i'll just like stop in here and there and on my way down just do something a little bit more organized this time and mm -hmm. uh work my way around and then hit some spots a lot of people have been always asking for me to visit and stuff and i'm like yeah yeah i will i will mm -hmm. so i'm just trying to make it happen now so. yeah that's kind of like the only real plan I have at the moment. Uh -huh. <laughs> Nothing's like super solid, but I'll, but I'm, you know, that's kind of in the, in the future. And your, your wife's a tattooer as well. She is. Yeah. yeah. And, and she's, she works in Brookline right up the, uh -huh. right up the street. Her place has been open a couple of years now and she's focusing a lot on the women's tattooing mm -hmm. and working with women uh, who've had breast cancer and, and uh, aerial reconstruction stuff and scar. Right. So she's a traditional tattooer, and she just wanted to kind of move, move out of the shop environment, have something a little bit more private for her clients because mm -hmm. she was accumulating those clients, you know. I think naturally, right? Just to have something that's a little bit more, you know, it's not like heavy metal blast and these, like these, sure. you know, these women that don't want to even go into a tattoo shop. That's doing really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good. It's definitely needed. Yeah. yeah. From what I hear. A lot of people get their kind of self-esteem back. From oh, yeah. Doing it's it. amazing. I, I'm blown away by how much I've learned from her experiences and just how it's like heavy-duty stuff. Mm. I'm, I, think, I think as I've gotten older, I've become more sensitive to that stuff and like having a lot more thoughtful clients, mm -hmm. you know, just in general, even my clients that are just coming to me for her to have this, not just have fun and rip some big old awesome you know robo skull thing it's uh -huh. like they'll come just get some little dinky thing because uh they just just to have that good good vibes and i'm blessed with a lot of those clients mm -hmm. no but, i think uh, I but think yeah that, totally that stuff like with her her work is just like it's it's uh it's amazing what these people go through and have to go through and mm -hmm. just the, like the things that the the medical world puts them through, which is that I think more than anything that I've learned, it's like it's so wild mm -hmm. what some of these women go through. They're already sick, or they already have this thing they have to happen, and then just she she deals with a lot a lot of women that just do reconstruction from the reconstruction. That's oh, just wow. like it's just brutal stuff. 
it's funny that thinking about like we we will get all wrapped up in what we do and become little prima donnas when we oh, don't want yeah. to do a little oh. thing that com- comes in the door and yeah. and we start thinking like we have the cures for cancer or something mm. like that <laughs> or yeah. or merit the same respect but yeah. like what she's doing is actually making a difference yeah <laughs> for sure yeah i'd say you know i have I, I i try to have great experiences with every client and stuff mm. and they and everybody they're getting the tattoo they need or whatever mm-hmm. i'll say it's pretty amazing we are or how big how big our life and our jobs feel to us mm. in the world like we th- like we're making a <laughs> we're making some big mark and the world and we're such a tiny little dot in the rest of the society and everything sure. more so now than before but mm-hmm. it's pretty amazing though to feel good about everybody's doing something they love and generating all this like positivity from it and mm-hmm. it's really super awesome i've been thinking about this a lot where when i started tattooing you don't you didn't really have too many thoughtful people i no, guess in yeah, yeah. in the, the business i mean Maybe you did. Yeah. I just wasn't encountering sure. many people, but I've I've been ca- encountering way more people nowadays sure. that way, where just a lot more self aware and want to kind of better themselves and yeah. everything else, like just socially aware as well. Yeah, I, I forget whose podcast it was, but it was a some interview with Scott Harrison. Mm-hmm. I don't really remember everything that he said, but he brought up the fact that you know, as tattooers, you know, we lived he lived this life with the opportunity to be honest mm. like all the time mm-hmm. like you don't that's yeah, true you could say anything you want in a tattoo shop you could say whatever you want mm-hmm. i don't even think it's it's just like automatic almost to take it for granted cuz you you don't realize how many people have to lie every day of their life yeah and we don't have to no and you have all these big groups of people now that are tattooing and they're these little enclaves of people that are being cultivating these awesome little shops or this you know like this inspiring environment of of honesty and and just like fewer and fewer filters and stuff it just like makes this really great community it's it's almost impossible to not become more attuned to other people's feelings mm. i think maybe back in the back in the old days you back know, like, in the old yeah. days um, back in my day <laughs> yeah it was just like i don't think i was even I, I definitely wasn't open to anything like that so of course i wasn't attracting anything like that because mm-hmm. it was just like it was still biker stuff, you know. Yeah. I, I was doing some crazy kid stuff, but it wasn't, there wasn't any deep tattooing going on. It was fully aesthetic. Like, mm-hmm. you're just said, make something cool and no feelings. Right. I don't know. It's really neat to be able to actually, maybe it's just all part of maturing in general, mm-hmm. you know, kind of quit caring what people think and yeah. Yeah, you can offer. It's good that we have stuff. the options. Yeah. And you think like a lot of people really don't never have that option to even just be themselves or something mm-hmm. it's like i feel like a, I mean. on a daily basis if anybody said or did what we did in any other job they'd yeah. be written up in hr Absolutely. or <laughs> like fired immediately yeah yeah it's it's a it's so it's still such a unique place to be as mm-hmm. much as a lot of people think it's tattooed dead or you know this is a dumb or yeah yeah i don't you know like don't all these like a lot of the people that wish it was like the still the old days or whatever mm-hmm. that's just a, a strange kind of place to linger i don't know i think we're really it's such a cool amazing magical thing that we get to do but it's such a it's such a place where you can actually be your be yourself and express yourself it's, it's kind of crazy mm-hmm. to be able to do that and you're not having to do it on a t-shirt or like a piece of or a piece of paper. Right. You do it on people's skin and people will let you do it. Mm-hmm. It's wild. It's wild. <laughs> it's amazing. Very thankful for that, for yeah. sure. I think this is a good positive note to end on. Cool. Uh, I apologize for not introducing you earlier, but uh, oh. for everyone listening, uh, this is Mr. Chad Chesco. Yeah, yeah I just didn't want to interrupt because I, I like where the oh, yeah. train of thought was going. I really appreciate you. Yeah. You're coming on here and looking Thanks. forward to the more work you're doing. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was a lot easier than I was thinking it was going to be. I told you. I told you. <laughs> but we can find you on Instagram, obviously. Yeah, just my name, just Chad Chesco. Uh-huh. And any website or uh anything? Chad Chad Chesco Tattoo. Yeah. Kind of try to keep it pretty easy. I got a big cartel store. It's just mm-hmm. Chesco Arts. Awesome. 
And um, and we can get your paintings from there. Yeah, okay. I'll post stuff there. I'll post stuff on Instagram mm-hmm. here and there too. You know, just keep your eyes open. Do you have a link from the Instagram to the Big Cartel? I or? do. Okay, yeah, it's on there. I got to double check that. Trying to trying to keep up with everybody. I don't. It's not the best, but I'm I'm working on yeah. it. <laughs> One man shows. Tough. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> the more more I uh, find out how many people have helpers, it's amazing. I'm like, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's how they do things. <laughs> <laughs> Makes total sense. Gotta get one of those. Yeah. So awesome, man. Thanks a lot for having me. Thank it was you. Super man. fun. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. Woohoo. My man. <laughs> All right. Cool.